Hello everyone and welcome to the weekly market update. I am Wael Makarim, market analyst at ICM.com and I'll be sharing with you my insight for the week. So first we are going to start with the developments of COVID-19, talk about the latest tensions between China and the United States and highlight the key economic releases and events for the week and finally go over some of the major charts to detect some support and resistance zones. So first let's start with COVID-19 developments. Uh, the confirmed cases surpassed 6 million and currently we stand near 6.2 million. The recovered cases uh, surged to 2.7 million, around 43%, 3% higher than last week, which is a little bit optimistic. And deaths crossed 370,000 among them, 100,000 casualties in the United States. The cases in Brazil crossed 500,000, making the country the largest infected, the second largest infected country after the United States. Also cases in Russia are rising significantly, however, Moscow decided today uh, to ease lockdown measures by opening shopping malls and parks. The country is claiming to have uh, to have a treatment to COVID-19 that will be shipped to hospitals starting June 11. The drug is called Avifavir, which is based on a generic version of Japan's Avigan. So this is also a little bit optimistic from Russia. Uh, European countries are moving forward with uh, with their plans to lower restrictions. Uh, also, some countries such as Japan will consider opening doors for travelers, but for selected countries. So most of the airports around the world will be opening within the coming uh, within the coming six weeks. Uh, and today uh, in Wuhan, they they conducted around 60,000 tests, and uh, they they showed zero asymptomatic cases, which is also a little bit positive. So mainly things are starting to look better on uh, the COVID-19 front, exiting from wave one. However, there is still uh, there's still some serious fears around having uh, a second wave, especially as uh, also the, the White House advisor, Dr. Fauci, he also uh, warned of having uh, a second wave. So moving to uh, one of the top uh, top market movers currently, uh, the US-China tensions. So uh, they are on the rise again. Last week, China passed national security law for Hong Kong. Uh, Trump, he had the presser also on Friday night uh, he, he stated that he's moving forward to end Hong Kong's special status and also uh, sanction officials responsible for holding Hong Kong's freedom. So uh, the tension is rising uh, over over Hong Kong. So first, it started by uh, when the virus uh, when the virus uh, started to 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 coming to United States. So Trump was uh, was always offending China and uh, and. Uh, uh, he, he was uh, he, he was a little bit offensive every time he, he's on Twitter or he's in a press conference. So he was mentioning China as a reason for uh, for the COVID-19 outbreak in the world. So uh, and then uh, things moved forward with Hong Kong when uh, when China passed the national security law. So these are two top cases currently: the COVID-19 outbreak and uh, Hong Kong. So these are the main problems between these two countries and especially also uh, let's not forget uh, the, the, the the main issue that we faced two years ago and we're still facing which was the the trade war between the the, the two largest uh, economies around the world so uh, uh, these uh, these are the key the key factors behind these tensions between these two countries. So um, Bloomberg reported today, this was the latest news today, Bloomberg reported that Chinese government officials asked agricultural firms to halt U.S. farm imports as the country is looking forward to assess the recent developments. So they are assessing the recent developments with the United States and checking whether they have to continue forward with uh, what they agreed on further, the phase one trade agreement. So uh, if, if it's true that China is going to halt uh, to halt its uh, its its for U.S. farm imports, maybe the United States could uh, could retaliate. Maybe Trump could uh, could signal getting out or uh, abandoning the trade uh, the trade the phase one trade agreement, which could have some major impact on the market. So now moving to the top economic uh, data this week, it's a very busy week in terms of data. We started today with. Uh, with manufacturing PMI figures from around the world, starting with China to Europe and uh, a while ago from the United States, they show they show a slight improvement compared to uh, to the activity in April. So uh, it is it is normal that things the activity is picking up starting the second half of May. So they're showing a little bit of optimism. So uh, on Tuesday, uh, well, we start early with the Reserve Bank of Australia. 
interest rate decision on monetary policy meeting. The bank is widely expected to leave interest rates unchanged. Uh, however, market participants will be looking for any hints on uh, on interest rate guidance or any uh, anything related to uh, also the asset purchases program. So, so this is from from the RBA. Expected interest rates to remain on hold at 0.25 percent. That is uh, then uh, a little bit shy throughout the day. Nothing major. Uh, until uh, the American Petroleum Institute announces the weekly crude oil stock that last week came out at 8.7 million, a significant rise. On Wednesday, uh, it's very busy. It's among the busiest days of the week. Uh, we start with the first quarter GDP from uh, from Australia and expectations of uh, expectations of a contraction of 0.3 percent during the first quarter. Also, the GDP from Switzerland also a contraction of 2.2.0 uh, percent. Expected in the first quarter in Switzerland. Uh, then we move forward with the German unemployment change, expectations of a rise of 200,000. Uh, then the final reading of the services PMI from the Eurozone and the United Kingdom, a reading uh, near 28 level expected. The producer price index from the Eurozone for April has dropped by 1.8%. Also, the unemployment rate uh, for April uh, expected a surge towards uh, or a rise towards 8.2% from 7.4% previously uh, showing the impact of the coronavirus on the labor market in the eurozone then we have uh, an indicator on uh, the US jobs report which is, it is usually considered an indicator for the non-farm payrolls which is the ADP non-farm employment change expectations of 9 million job losses in May and that year we have the monetary policy meeting of the Bank of Canada, expectations of keeping interest rates on hold at 0.25%. However, any talk about or any comments concerning uh, adopting negative interest rates in the future could weigh on the currency, which was rising in the past couple of days. So this is from Bank of Canada. Also, we have the ISM non-manufacturing PMI, a little bit of an improvement to its 44 level from 41 previously. The U.S. factory orders in April a contraction of 14% uh, versus 10.4% previously. And finally, the weekly crude oil report by the U.S. Energy Information Administration expecting of a drop of 1.944 million barrels last week uh, compared to a buildup of 7.928 million barrels in the, week pre in the week prior. So this is for Wednesday. On Thursday, also, we have a central bank meeting. But first, we start with the Australian retail sales, uh, a sharp drop of 17.9% expected, a trade a trade balance, uh, a surplus in trade balance of uh, is a surplus of 7 billion, 7.5 billion in trade balance versus 10.6 previously. So uh, this is the these are the data from uh, from Australia. So also it's a busy week for Australia. We start the Reserve Bank of Australia meeting the GDP and retail sales and trade balance. Moving to the United Kingdom, construction PMI rise towards 29.7 versus 8.2. Previously, the Eurozone, uh, the European Central Bank will also meet to decide on monetary policy. No change is expected. After that, uh, Christine Lagarde will be communicating the, the decision to uh, to the public. And after we have the weekly jobless claims, uh, expectations of a rise of 1.8 million, which is the lowest pace in two months. Also, US trade balance a deficit of 49 billion. This is for Thursday. And finally, on Friday, we have also the US jobs report. But first, we start with the German factory orders, a contraction of 19.7% in April. Then the US jobs report rise in earnings by 1.0%. Uh, Non-farm payrolls expecting a jo uh, 8 million job losses and unemployment rate to skyrocket towards 19.7% versus 14.7% in April. Also in Canada, expectations of 500,000 job losses and unemployment rate to rise to 15%. Uh, and we end the week with a Canadian IVEY PMI and the Baker Hughes oil recount. So this is for the economic indicators and uh, top economic events for the week. So you have to be careful for any uh, any effect uh, any effect in the market also we we are waiting some headlines from uh, oil producers and expected OPEC plus meeting so uh, in case you are trading oil you better also watch out for some headlines from top oil producers so this is for the economic events uh, we're going to move to the, to the MetaTrader 4 platform to talk about some major currency pairs so first let's start with uh, the dollar index Okay, so the dollar index we had, we had a, it was very clear last week that we had a 
the past 10 days also that the dollar was weakening the, the dollar is moving uh, up extremely opposite to, uh, to 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 risk uh, risk on assets so when the when we have uh, some risky events the market is uh, investors are preferring uh, other currencies to the US dollar and the Japanese yen so we're, we're not witnessing any uh, like significant move or uh, a strong move on the dollar and Japanese yen, so mainly they they are acting as safe haven currencies. However, when the risk sentiment is on, uh, we when, so when the risk sentiment is on, we are witnessing some flows towards the euro, the pound, and commodity currencies such as the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and the Canadian dollar. So uh, as you can see here, last week we we were able to break below uh, below the consolidation zone that 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 have been. Uh, Therefore, the past two months, so the market moved down. Um, if, if we go for the daily chart, you can see a series of uh, of, uh, of daily uh, moves down. So, uh, in terms of uh, of support, we we have to look for uh, we have to look for some uh, so some levels here. This is a uh, one of the significant levels, 97.40. Since it was here resistance, and then here we had a gap almost around this level. So it's uh, it's good to monitor this level, 97.40. And again, a drop towards 96. This is uh, this is on the negative scenario for the dollar index. If you if you're trading the dollar index, you have to watch out for these levels in terms in case of a move down. So 97, uh, 97, 40, 97, 35, and 96 levels. Uh, also on the on the upside or for a positive scenario, you have to clear above uh, 98, 65 level. We we've seen in the morning uh, on the headlines that China is considering halting some U.S. imports. The dollar had a little bit of a rebound. So um, if, if we have uh, if we have some uh, uh, some tensions again, and uh, investors will will will, uh, will be be driven towards uh, safe safe assets, we could we could see the dollar rebounding. But first, we have to clear uh, 90, 98, 80 levels in order to uh, to move a little bit higher towards uh, the 100 levels. So these are the key levels to watch on on a rebound for the dollar, the 98, 80 level, and uh, the 100 level on the upside. And for the downside, you have to monitor 97, 40, 97, 35, and uh, 95, 97, or 96 levels. So these are the key levels to trading the dollar index this week, moving towards the euro dollar. Uh, the the movement today almost stalled near the previous resistance, the the, the highs of uh, uh, one one eleven forty five. So the next resistance could come in at uh, one twelve thirty. In case you're uh, you're bullish on the euro, you have to watch out for resistance near this level. So first, after clearing uh, the the current resistance minor resistance level at eleven forty five, we have also to uh, to to clear one twelve thirty seven. Uh, which was the previous high here, and then also to attack it as a resistance a couple of times here. So this is for the euro dollar. In case you're bullish on the euro dollar, you have to look out for 12.37. And in terms of uh, reversals, uh, the euro must clear 10.20 in order to have a little bit of negativity and move lower, maybe towards uh, the support zone here at 108.72. So these are the key levels for the euro trading this week: 110.20 and 108.70 from the bottom, and 112.11.45.50. And 112.40 on the upside. Uh, moving towards the pound, which was uh, recovering from uh, from the, the losses incurred uh, during uh, the, the beginning of April uh, of May. So we had this uh, very negative candle, uh, significant move lower amid talks on adopting negative interest rates over the market. Uh, the, the British pound against the dollar was recovering in the past two weeks and today also we, we are having have a pretty good move to the upside so in case you're trading we're currently standing near the 61.8 retracement level so um it is almost around the 61.8 we, we just broke about this level so in terms in case you're you're bullish on the pound you have to watch out for uh the coming resistance zone which was uh which was holding lately near 2630 and uh and again at 2740 this is for uh, for for the resistance levels that you have to watch out for, and in terms of support, you have to look for any break uh, below 2260, and again uh, the, the the low of uh, 2080. So these are the boundaries for the pound dollar this week. The levels that you have to watch out for in terms of resistance and support: so 2630 and 2740, and in terms of support: 2250 and 2080. These are the levels if you are trading. The pound dollar moving towards the dollar yen 
Uh, we're not seeing uh, a move lately in the, the pair since both currencies are being in demand when the market, uh, when investors are uh, are seeking safety and uh, vice versa. So, so you can see on the daily chart, uh, we we have uh, we have a series of uh, of narrow range uh, candles. So nothing much happening on the dollar yen, awaiting some fresh drivers that could separate the 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 status of these two uh two two currencies, the dollar and the yen. So you can see here a resistance zone near 108 level, and uh, and the, the prior zone was was around. 109 so these are the key levels 10935 so these are the key levels on the upside for the dollar yen and on the downside you have to look out for a break below 10690 and again at 10595 so these are the key levels if you're trading the Japanese yen 108 and 10935 and on the bottom 10690 and 10594 if you're trading the dollar yen moving towards the Australian dollar which was overperforming uh, the past couple of weeks amid uh, improved risk sentiment and since also China was uh, China's activity is, uh, is is almost back to to prior levels so uh, the, the Australian dollar was benefiting from this uh, this move so uh, uh, also uh, currently the, the 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 pair is trading uh, is trading near uh, this trend line so which which combines the 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 key uh, the key highs since since February 2018. So we're almost trading near this trend line. We have a series of higher highs and higher lows, witnessing an uptrend. So in case you're trading, you're bullish on uh, on the Australian dollar. You have to look out for a break above this trend line, and also after you have to highlight 69.30 as a key resistance zone for. Uh, for the Australian dollar ahead of the 70 psychological level, and then the next level comes in at 70.30. So these, these are the two levels. If you're trading, uh, if you're bullish on the Australian dollar, uh, you have to watch out for these two, uh, two, two, two targets or two resistance levels. And in terms of a reversal, the, the, the pair should, should break below 66.15, and, uh, and the next support could come in. Uh, also near uh, the 64 level, so so this is it's it's, it's a little bit far around 300 pips. So we need like uh, a good catalyst for the market in order to uh, to move. We can see today that if, if we go closer, we have a closer look. We can see how uh, how sensitive was the Australian dollar towards the the headlines from China today. So we had a reversal or a drop of almost around 50 pips in around an hour. From uh, due to the headlines that that increased or spread uh, tensions between China and the United States, so any any rising tensions again could weigh on the currency and uh, on the on the country. If uh, if, if, if these uh, tensions receded, we could see a little bit more also of a move higher on uh, on the Australian dollar against the U.S. dollar. Moving towards the New Zealand, which all, the New Zealand dollar, which was also having the same almost the same move as the Australian dollar moving uh, moving higher. So uh, we just have to look out for uh, the, the resistance zone near uh, 60, 64, 50. It's a, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit far, but it's, uh, it's a key level. And also on the interim zone, we have to look out for 63.20. So these are the two levels, resistance levels for the New Zealand dollar, 63.20 and 64.53 on the upside. And on the downside, we have to break below 6170 again in order to, um, to to have a little bit of negativity, maybe, and then the pair could rally lower towards 59 level. If we also, uh, they are so all the commodity currencies, the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and Canadian dollar, they are moving with risk sentiment. So on positive risk sentiment, the pairs or the the commodity currencies are gaining, and uh, and vice versa. So this is for the New Zealand dollar. Moving towards the Canadian dollar, which was benefiting against the, the, the US dollar, especially as oil prices recovered uh, heavily. So uh, the, the pair was moving lower, the USD was losing against the CAD. So uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, levels, we have to watch out for the 61.8 level, which comes in at 61.36 uh, almost. So it's, it's a key level to watch out for. And the 76.4, which comes in at 33.30, which is also coinciding with the previous resistance levels uh, in, in August. So these are the two, two, two support levels to watch out if you're trading the USD CAD 136 and 133.40. And uh, if, you, if you're looking for reversal, you have to uh, to to wait for a break above 138, which was here the consolidation zone, or the uh, the consolidation zone be ahead ahead of this move. So 138, and again uh, 139.80. So these are the levels. Mainly the Fibonacci levels are uh, are showing the key levels for trading 
the uh, the USD CAD. So we're trading here almost for, for resistance. You have to look out for uh, resistance near 138, 138.40, and uh, another resistance at 140 levels. So these are the key levels on the upside for the USD CAD. And on the downside, you have to look out for 136 and 133, uh, 133.40. These are the key levels for the Canadian dollar, the US dollar against the Canadian dollar this week uh, moving to gold uh, which which had a little bit of a rebound uh, since last week so prices dropped as low as 1694 uh and then and then had this this move higher uh the, the riots in the united states and also uh the the tensions between china and the united states and also the, the prospects of having more stimulus from different country countries around the world so uh they, they are all supporting the fact of uh that they are all boosting the demand for uh for gold so this is uh, this is on the uh, on the the catalyst behind behind the moving gold uh so if you if you're bullish uh, So if you're bullish on gold, you have to to watch out for these levels here. Excuse me, we had uh, we had a uh, technical issue. So, uh, continuing for for uh, for gold prices, if you if you're bullish on gold, you have to watch out for this trend line that have been holding for a while. So, any break below this trend line could it could mean for uh, could lead for a bigger correction in gold prices. And if you're looking for uh, for a bullish movements, watch out from resistance near the previous high of 17.46 and. Uh, and again, at, uh, at the prior high of, uh, of 1764, the recent high of 1764. So these are the key levels to watch out for uh, gold. 1745, we retested this level earlier today during the Asian session, and a uh, move higher could also uh, trigger some resistance again near the, pre the recent high of 1764. And in terms of support, also uh, you have to you have to watch out for uh, this low, which which was almost close to to today's low, today's low was 1727, and this uh, this key support is around 1722. So also you have to watch out for 1722 and the break of this trend line in terms of support if you're trading, uh, if you if you're trading calls. So uh, I, I want to repeat the resistance levels near 1745 and 1764, and support zones near 1723 and uh, the trend line which comes in near 1700. So this is for trading gold. Silver was uh, also continuing the rally higher. We had this move and then uh, flag and then another move higher and then another flag and then also uh, the market uh, moved uh, moved towards uh, towards their highest level since late february so uh so so we have to uh to 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 watch out for the break of this trend line or how how the price will will behave with this trend line since it's combining the the recent tops for silver so uh the trend line comes in at the 1840 and the next level which is also here it was also a resistance previously 1885 so if you're trading silver watch out for two resistance zones near 17, 1840 and 1885 ahead of the key resistance which was the highest in 2019 around 1961 so this is for for uh, the move upside in uh, in silver and for reversals, if you're looking for reversals, the market could uh, could uh, could 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 have uh, like to give a clear signal for reversal. Maybe if we went uh, if we, if we can break below 1760 support, which was here acting as a resistance, it was also previous higher here. So a break below 1760 could trigger a move lower towards 16. 50 1655 so watch out for these levels if you're trading silver 1885 this trend line 1840 1850 almost 1885 and 1960 and in terms of support 1760 and 1655 Moving towards the Dow Jones, uh, it's, it's it's moving like the Dow Jones had a little bit of a good move last week, especially after uh, on uh, as investors are optimistic about the reopening of the economy. However, uh, the, the the China U.S. tensions are weighing on the market sometimes. So, uh, as if you, if you can see today on the hourly chart, the market moved moved down for following the 
uh, the the Chinese uh, the headlines from China regarding the U.S. foreign goods. So 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 uh, it's, it's, the market sentiment is very sensitive to towards such headlines. Uh, currently, we're we're trading in consolidation near the highest levels since uh, since the break. In, in March, if we go for the daily chart, we can see that the market here stalled at uh, the gap, the previous gap. So here, the previous high was exactly uh, the, the the price uh, closed before the gap. So if, if you're tra if you're bullish on the Dow Jones, you have to wait to to look for a break above the previous high of almost 25,750 in order to move higher towards 27,000 on uh, on the bigger scale. So you have to 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 look for these levels if in case you are trading the Dow Jones and you're optimistic about the Dow Jones you're bullish on the Dow Jones so you have to look out for uh, for these two key levels for uh, for for maybe no, no, not only this week but but for uh, for uh, the June movement and uh, in terms of support we have to break below 24,760 which was current which was uh, the the, pre, the 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 top for uh, for April and also mid-may so uh so so this is a, level, a break below this level could trigger uh further selling and uh the, the prices could lower it could could uh rally lower maybe to 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 find some retracement levels maybe near uh, the 61.8 percent which uh, which comes in at 23,911 so these are the key levels to watch out for uh for the dow jones uh, uh, 24,770 and 23,900 uh, 900 on the downside and on the upside 25,800 and 27,000 these are the key levels if you are trading the Dow Jones also you have to be careful for any headlines regarding China and uh, the, the trade deal between China or the phase one trade agreement between China and the United States so this is for the Dow Jones moving to oil oil prices were consolidating near their highest levels since uh, since March almost so uh, awaiting some fresh fundamental drivers there are a lot of talks about uh, the, the future uh, agreement uh, the, the future action of uh, top oil producers especially that we are awaiting an OPEC plus meeting this, this uh, in the, the coming days so uh, so any talks about uh, further uh, adoption for the current cuts or extending the, the, the deadline of the current cuts could be supportive for the market However, also any uh, any abundance for for these commitments, so uh, meaning that uh, production levels will start to 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 get back to their normal levels. This could weigh also on price, especially if we weren't yet in in a, in a recovery and in a good recovery mode. So this is for for oil. If you go for uh, we have for closer look on the performance of the past 10 days we were trading inside this consolidation zone so it was clear we had the support near to it near 31 level and resistance near uh near 34 80 prices moved higher uh trading slightly above the resistance zone and currently we are retesting this level so how will the price will behave here it could it, it, it could give us a hint so maybe if we can break below uh, if you can see here the market rebounded exactly from the previous top here so if we were able to trade below the stop maybe it could trigger some further selling and we could witness uh, 31 level during this week so watch out for uh for these two levels in case you're trading you're looking for a reversal in oil prices or a correction in oil prices and on the bigger picture if we're going to look for for some targets if you're bullish on oil um I have to look for uh for for 30 36 70 which was the previous high following uh, following the gap so 36 70 and also we can have some um so if you can see here 61.8 level is almost coinciding with uh with the 36 uh, 36 60 36 70 and currently the the support was at 50% so this is from from the the recent move down on um uh, on oil the the swing lower so uh so these are the key levels to watch out for 36 60 36 70 and on the downside 31 level so we're trading inside this consolidation zone any break above this could mean on the longer run we could we could retest uh, the 40 levels for oil and any break below the 50 percent retracement which is 31 level we could retest uh, almost 26 40 uh, 26 27 levels for oil so this is uh these are the key levels for oil if we have uh,
here we can see that uh, the, the Bollinger Bands are moving closer to each other, especially after this consolidation here, meaning that the market could uh, could have a little bit of a spike in the coming hours. So watch out for any move on uh, on oil, which could be also driven by any headlines, uh, any headlines uh, that has to do with uh, OPEC plus uh, production cuts. So this is for for oil. And this is all for today. So if you have any for any questions, so please write them down so I can answer them. So I would just like to remind you that all the information uh, or opinions mentioned in uh, in this webinar are just for educational purposes and only serve for educational purposes and uh, shouldn't be taken as a signal whether to buy or sell for a certain financial instrument. So they are only for educational purposes. So if you have any questions, please write them down so I can answer them. So to sum up, we have three major central banks meeting this week, the Reserve Bank of Australia, the Bank of Canada and the European Central Banks on, on Tuesday, on Wednesday and on Thursday. Also, we have the US jobs report coming out on Friday. So we have a lot of movement, a uh, lot of activity on the economic calendar this week, Tuesday, th Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Every day we have uh, we have uh, important events. Uh, so so this is on uh, the economic calendar this week so if you have any made any questions please write them down so i can answer them so just a kind reminder any uh, all the opinions analysis news and information mentioned in this webinar only serve for educational purposes and shouldn't be taken as a signal whether to buy or to sell a certain financial instrument and ICM doesn't provide any investment advice. So this is just a reminder. On Wednesday, we are having an educational webinar uh, to talk about fundamental analysis. So if you need further information or further support in uh, understanding fundamental analysis, you can also uh, join webinar uh, the webinar taking place on Wednesday. Okay, I believe this is it for today. So thank you all for joining. If you need any help or support, kindly send an email on uh, webinar at icm.com or support at icm.com and we will be glad to help you. So this is all for now. Thank you for attending.